Hi, today we're going to be drawing a flamingo. Uh, you will need some paper. You can use copy paper. You can use uh, drawing paper from a sketch pad if you want, or watercolor paper if you're going to paint it. And uh, you might want to use some colored pencils, uh, crayons, markers, uh, any colored uh, art materials. You could even paint it or use oil pastels if you have them at home. Uh, today we're just going to be using pencil to sketch it out and some colored pencils and some markers to fill in our flamingo. Um, my name is Mrs. Massiello and I'm going to do a guided drawing and uh, let's get started. So the first thing we want to look at are the basic shapes that we see in the flamingo. So I see a circle in the head, maybe a rectangle in the beak, a triangle at the end of the beak, some long, long curvy lines. Um, also, I see a circle or an oval shape in the body. And I'm going to draw my flamingo with the beak pointing in the opposite direction. This is just a reference photo, and I'm probably going to put the legs um, so that they look like they're standing in the water. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start with the head and we're going to put it in the top left portion of the paper. I'm going to start by drawing a circle, a circle that I see in the head. Just like that, a circle. I use a backward C and a frontward C to make a circle, or I could just keep drawing around to make a circle. I could even trace something, a small circle. Um, if I have something laying around the house, that's a round shape. The next thing I wanna do is draw two lines, one on one side of the circle and one on the other side of the circle. And that's gonna help me form my beak. So it's a short diagonal line. They're kind of parallel lines. And then I'm gonna curve it down and create that little point, like a triangle for my beak. So it's a head and my, they have a beak that points down. Now I'm gonna start at the top of the head and I'm gonna use a curved line going off of the top of the head, almost like a backwards S. So just a curvy line, like a backwards S. And then I'm going to, from the circle, I'm gonna keep drawing this line, like so. At any point, if you feel like you need to stop and rewind and look at it again, um, feel free to do that. Take your time. You don't have to draw as fast as I'm drawing. Okay. And now from right about here, I'm gonna draw another curvy it's like that backwards S shape. It's about two finger space or one finger space in between. And I'm gonna draw to there. And so far I've drawn that much. A circle, a beak, backwards, kind of a curve, kind of like an S, but a very long one. I don't wanna go too far down because I need my body to be here and room for my legs. So I think I might even shorten up my body just about an inch. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want to start to sketch out the body. And I'm going to go from here and I'm going to make like a U shape. Like so. So from the from this left line, I'm going to make a U shape. Like so. I still have this part of the back of the neck, the back of the neck, and then I'm going to draw a curved line. So it kind of forms an oval. Do you see the oval, boys and girls? You see that shape? It's going to look like an oval, and then I make it a little pointy on the end, like an almond. See this point right like that? Like an almond shape. That's going to represent some of the feathers that will hang down, okay, off the body. So now we have the circle for the head, the beak, the neck. 
I drew a line under here, like so, for to create that oval. And then I came up, so now we have this oval shape. Once we have this, the body, I'm gonna come in and put it almost like an upside down triangle shape, just about in the middle underneath the body, as if I was gonna draw a triangle, but I don't fill it in all the way. Just like so. And I'm gonna make a little flat line underneath. So I have almost like an upside down triangle shape. It's flat, trapezoid upside down. So now I just wanna show you where I'm putting the legs. So we have that triangular shape that was underneath the body. And I'm going to draw maybe one finger space wide. I'm gonna draw one line. And then I'm going to draw another line here. But then I wanna draw a bump for the knee for where the leg bends and then come back in. So if you want, you could just draw a straight line and then put that in. Okay, and then for the back leg, I just draw a diagonal line and then finger space, another diagonal line. And then I'm gonna curve it and draw this way drawing a diagonal this way and pretend it goes behind this leg and then bend my foot. I could put a few little crinkle lines where the skin would bend and then I'm going to draw at the bottom of this leg a curve line so he kind of looks like he's on a popsicle stick and I'm not going to show the foot. Then I'm going to draw some curved lines from around and behind this leg because I want to try to make it look like it's sitting in the water. It's standing in the water. So the flamingo is standing in the water. I'm going to start to draw some lines off of the body. And these are called contour lines and they curve like so. Contour line means it just follows the shape of the body. So you want them not to be straight lines. You want them to be curved lines so that it, it starts to make the body look like it's rounded. And I'm making these feathers rather large. It's a cartoony bird and put in little points on the ends of the feathers and I can like kind of flip it up a little bit or have it point down. And then I'm gonna take these lines. See how I have two lines here? I want to connect them, make it look like there's a feather there. So it's just the two lines and then I bring two curved lines together to create the point. And then I want to put some underneath to make it look like there's feathers overlapping, layers of feathers. And of course they would have many more feathers. I'm just drawing a few. And then over here, this is like the wing on this side of the body. So my lines would start to change. They, they're not going in this direction anymore. Over here, I want my lines to kind of curve this way. Almost like they tuck under. These are over and these lines tuck under. I know it looks a little confusing. So if you need to go back and like um, look at it again, rewind. Uh, I have a lot of pencil lines underneath. I would want to erase a lot of the sketchy lines because it can make your drawing a little confusing. So you wanna clean it up a little bit. But, you know, if you're, if you're going for more realism, you're gonna to wanna to have a lot of those lines in your drawing. Um, 
because it's just gonna it's going to look like it has more feathers a little bit more texture So once I have my um, bird sketched, I'm going to want to outline it with a marker. I'm going to decide what materials I want to use. Colored pencils, crayons, markers, watercolor paint if you have it at home. Um, if you want to do it in watercolor paint, you might want to darken your pencil lines uh, before you paint in so that you don't lose your lines when you add paint. We're not painting this bird today. We're just going to be using colored pencils some crayons, some markers, and I'm gonna mix the medias, the mediums together. Um, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm gonna to want to take a pink marker and just give my flamingo an outline. So I'm just going to take this marker and outline it right now. If you don't have markers, you could use a colored pencil. I wouldn't outline it in black, maybe at the end because it is a cartoon. Uh, but right now, I just want a basic pink outline. And I'm going to go over the pencil lines that I want. If there's anything that I don't want, I can get rid of them. I can erase them. But I'm just basically retracing over my pencil lines and I'm using a darker pink because then I could use maybe a lighter pink on the inside. Uh, I can change my shade of pink. Uh, this way I have like various different pinks within my uh, artwork. It always makes it look a little bit more interesting. You might want to put darker pinks in the layers that are underneath and lighter pinks on the layers that are on top. You want to pull out all the pink crayons in your crayon bin or all the different pinks that you might have in your colored pencils. Uh, there are ways to make colored pencil a little bit darker too. You could um, use a little red in with your pink and, and mix some red colored pencil in there. Some of the pinks do look like they have some red tones. I pulled all my like fluorescent hot pinks. So this is going to be like a hot pinky pink flamingo. So I'm going with my outline first. I'll even outline my legs. They're, they're darker, but I'll outline them in pink for now. So remember this leg is behind this one. So if, it, if you crossed over, you want to erase any line that you might have in there. I missed a few lines. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to go over some of these pencil lines and just have these lines look like they all come together here. So any of my extra pencil lines that I want, I put more lines in. Just looks like more feathers creating implied texture with the lines. I can draw, you see these big feathers? There's, there are a few big feathers. There's one, two, three feathers right here. I could put a line in the middle and I could put some diagonal lines coming off of that. Oh, like how a feather might really look with some lines coming out from the middle of that feather. Okay, and that's going to add to and create more texture on my feathers. I could just do this on the side, just with, just with my darker marker, just to create some, some more lines so it's not so plain. And I can put some underneath. This might be for a more advanced student. Students that are older, you might want to put more texture, make them really look more like feathers. For my younger students, you just want to put some lines, a few lines in here, not really scribbling, um, 
but trying to follow the shape of the body with your lines. And then once you have your darker lines in, we can come in with the colored pencil or a pink crayon. Okay, use a pink crayon and look for where the feathers look lighter. And you're not really gonna see this on a video because the pink is really light. So I think I'll just switch to my colored pencil. And now I'm gonna pick a direction and stick with it and kind of color in the direction that the body is uh, curving in. So I don't just want to color straight across. I want to, I want to follow. I want to follow the shape, the contour. I want to follow the shape of the body. And I'm not going to press really hard right now. I use the side of my tip of my pencil, and that's going to help me fill in more space. Try to stay inside my lines because it's as if we made our own coloring book page of a flamingo. It's not a very real flamingo, it's a cartoon flamingo. But it just gives you the basic idea of how to draw it. You used shapes and lines to put it all together. And then if you wanted to start drawing something more realistic, you just keep practicing and you can make it more realistic. So I'm basically just kind of blocking it in quickly with my colored pencil. I'm not pressing that hard. You, again, using the side of the tip, it's getting dull, so you're gonna wanna sharpen that. I keep a sharpener handy, my handy dandy sharpening cup. I sharpen into my cup and then my erase it, my sharpening shavings go um, into the cup so they don't get all over the place. So you might want to try that at home if you have a hand sharpener. And again, coloring in the direction that my feathers are curving in it makes it look a little bit neater. It's also going to help to make my body look curvy and round. And right now I just use the same pressure on the whole flamingo. And I, I colored in lightly, not pressing too hard just yet. And then I will press harder eventually where I want to make the flamingo darker. So now I'm going to work on the face and the neck. pick a direction and stick with it so that I uh, am not scribbling in different directions. But if you're younger, it's sometimes you have to turn the paper. If you, you feel like you need to turn the paper, sometimes your coloring goes in different directions. It's okay. Just try to work as neatly as you possibly can. So now I want to start making my um, feathers a little darker and I don't have a lot of different colored colored pencils here so I am going to use the same colored pencil this pink one it's called Berry from Crayola or Crazy Art and um, I'm going to start pressing a little harder where I want my feathers to look a little darker. So I don't want them to be dark everywhere. Notice I'm making them darker where they tuck underneath other feathers. So I'm gonna press a little harder just where they're tucking in. So you could try that. And it starts to make my flamingo look like now these feathers are lighter and these are underneath, correct? You see that? So I'm creating shading with the colored pencil. And I'm doing that just with the same color just pressing a little harder, but not pressing hard everywhere. So I want these feathers to look like they're tucking under here. I can come in and color a little harder here. Because I want them to look like they're tucking under Like so. So I'm not going to press hard everywhere so that I have light pink and dark pink. I can press a little harder along the edges of my feathers. But if 
if I start going too dark everywhere, then it's just all gonna look like it's the same pink. You, the one thing about colored pencil, you do have to sharpen them often. And now I want underneath the neck to look a little darker over here. So I'm gonna, where my, where the neck kind of comes in and overlaps, I'm gonna make it this part. Can you see? I'm gonna start making this part of the neck darker. Create a little shading. Like so. I'm gonna go a little darker around the edge of the face now with my colored pencil. And then I lighten up as I get to the back edge of the neck. I'm gonna go a little darker here too. Go back into here, I feel like I didn't do enough. And you can always go back and forth, see how you like it. You might like the tips of your feathers to be a little darker. You could do that. You can make the tips a little darker. It's up to you, however you feel like you envision your flamingo feathers to look. And then I would come in with, I'm gonna use a black marker for my beak. for the end of the beak and for my eye. So this is gonna be black. And if you don't have black, you can use your pencil and just press really hard, but you would wanna do that last because the pencil might smear on your project, smear all over your project. So I'm gonna do this, fill in my flamingos beak and my eye, leaving a highlight in the pupil, and then a nice outline around this eye. Okay, and then I'm going to use, I'm going to go with this peach in the face probably can't see it too well and the camera is not going to really show it but I'm putting this peachy color into my flamingo's face in here because it is lighter you can see the flamingo's lighter in here it's not a very good picture I'm just using my imagination but it looks a little lighter it's black here and then the rest of the flamingo is really pink um, I'm gonna use the pink and a gray marker in my legs. So let's see, I have my shadow is over here. So I'm gonna make this this side of my flamingo leg a little darker. But first I'm just gonna use my colored pencil and color it in. I'm gonna color the legs in pink. So someone can message me and tell me exactly why the flamingo is pink. Who knows why? So if you can message me and give me the explanation of why the flamingo is this beautiful pink color. I'm going to take the gray marker and I'm just going to put a dark outline. Here's my knee. Remember I came and made this bump? So if you have a straight line, you wanna put a little bit of a bump there for a knee. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of the gray on this side. And then I'm gonna do that. Hmm. Let me do that in here. Maybe on the bottom. I think I'm gonna 
outline my whole leg. with the gray just to make it look a little bit different than you could do this in pencil if you don't have a gray marker i have this uh, you know a lot of different colored markers laying around the house but if you don't have it you could just use a pencil this created a little shading i'm going to make my legs a little darker in the middle here Almost to make it look like the light shining this way. Create a little shadow here on my legs. I hope you can see that. And then I think I'm just gonna take this blue crayon and go around my pencil lines. So I'm tracing over my pencil lines. Remember, these were just like ripples. It's not ocean water that's real, um, doesn't have big waves. It's kind of like calm, calmer. And I'm going around rings, but they're not circles. They're like flattened ovals or flattened ellipses. I'm putting these rings around kind of stretch out as they get further away. See how they stretch out? The rings get wider and wider. So closer to the flamingo, the rings are closer, smaller, and then they spread out. And I make the outlines dark. I used to love doing this with my coloring book. I make the outlines dark and then I'm just gonna lightly color inside. Lightly color inside. I can lightly color inside. And I'm coloring in the direction. Instead of coloring straight across, I want to color. I want to follow that contour. So I hope you had fun drawing a flamingo today. And uh, ooh, next time we will paint one. Um, but for today, being my first video ever, um, we're just using colored pencils, cartoony flamingo, and there is our, there she is, he, she, I don't know, I name her, um, Fanny the Flamingo. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I hope you had fun, and um, maybe tomorrow we'll paint something, okay? Uh, how about a palm tree? I'll talk to you later. Bye. Miss you. Bye.